In this video, we will discuss about interfacing an LED with ARM Cortex M4 microcontroller GPIO available on TWASI series launchpad evaluation kit. So let's get started. These are the steps that we will use for interfacing and programming an LED using TWASI series launchpad evaluation kit. In the following, we will discuss each with some details. First of all, we need to select a GPIO pin for interfacing the LED. This schematic shows the ARM Cortex M4 microcontroller available on TVAC series launchpad evaluation kit. There are 43 GPIO pins that are grouped in six ports labeled from port A to port F. Port A to port D are 8 pin ports and port E is 6 pin while the port F has only 5 pins. On TVC series launch pad, out of these 43 GPIO pins, only 35 pins are available. We can use any GPIO pin available on this microcontroller. Let's use port E pin 1 for interfacing the LED. After selecting port E pin 1 as digital output for LED, now we need to perform some configuration steps. The step 1 is enable clock for GPIO port. By default, clock on all GPIO ports is disabled in order to save power. Whether we need to use entire GPIO port or few pins, we need to enable clock for that GPIO port. Clock getting control register is responsible for enabling clock for GPIO ports. Bit 0 to bit 5 of this register can be set to enable clock to port A to port F respectively. This table shows the different bits of this clock getting control register. As you can see, bit 0 correspond to port A, bit 1 correspond to port B, and so on. As we want to enable clock for port E only, therefore this bit is set to 1 while all other bits are 0. The equivalent hexadecimal value that need to be right on this register is hex 1 G. The second configuration step is GPIO bus selection. As we know that there are two on-chip buses which connect the processor core to the peripherals. The first one is called advanced peripheral bus and the second one is called advanced high performance bus. So we can select one of uh, these buses by selecting the appropriate base address for the GPIO port. This table shows the base addresses for each port with both type of the bus. Like you can see this is the address of port E if we access it through advanced peripheral bus. And this will be the address of port E if we want to access it through advanced high performance bus. So let's select advanced peripheral bus for port E for interfacing the LED. Each GPIO port has an associated set of registers that are used for its configuration. Some of these registers have been shown in this table. Let's discuss them one by one in context of our LED interfacing problem. All these configuration registers have same offset value from the port base address. It means we can calculate their address by just adding the base address of the port to these offset values. The mode control register is used to disable the alternate functionality. For that we need to clear the bits that we want to use as a GPIO pin. The pad control configuration is used to enable a GPIO pin as a digital pin. For that we need to set that bit to 1. 
in data control configuration, these two registers are important. GPIO direction enable register is used to set a pin either input or output. Since we want to interface the LED as an output, therefore we need to set that particular bit to configure the pin as a GPIO output. The 12 bit offset value for GPIO data register is set such that only pin one of the GPIO port is accessible. So these are the configuration steps that we need to perform before using the port E pin as a GPIO output. Let's write a C language program in Microvision Keel for performing these configuration steps. Let's start a new project using Microvision Keel Project Manager. First of all, we need to select the device since we are using Tiva C series launchpad. Therefore, we need to type this device name in order to add it to the project. Now we need to select the code from CMSYS and the startup file from the device. Hit OK. It is an empty project so we need to add a c file by right click on source group one and add new item to group so I select the c file and file name let me call it led interfacing and hit add so a new empty file has been added to the project now we can start writing c language code for this program we can start by adding some comments related to the program file. Now we can start uh, writing C language code by adding some object like macros. These macros uh, are defined to hold the register values and addresses. You can verify all these register addresses and their corresponding values in the configuration steps that we discussed earlier. These two macros are used to generate delay that is required in order to blink the LED. Now we can start writing our user main program. So this is the C language program that is used to toggle the LED interface at port E pin 1. Now we will build the project and you can see the target is successfully created. Before connecting any external peripheral, it is highly recommended to learn about the GPIO's operating condition. This table has been taken from the datasheet of the microcontroller. In this table, you can see some of the GPIO's operating conditions for input as well as output. Since we are interfacing in an LED with the microcontroller as an output, therefore we are interested in the output properties. You can see uh, the GPIO pin its high level output voltage is 2.4 and uh, its low level output voltage is only 0.4 volt. You can also notice that these GPIO output pins can also provide different range of uh, uh, the currents. These values can be configured by using different configuration registers. Let's see what part these recommended GPIO operating conditions play while interfacing an LED with the microcontroller. 
as we noticed in the previous screen that GPIO pins provide very little syncing and sourcing current that is even not enough to drive some of the peripherals. Even the high level output voltage on the GPIO pin is 2.4 volt which is not enough to turn on an LED. Therefore we need a buffer circuit that can successfully interface the LED with the microcontroller pins. Here we are using the transistor as a switch that can provide the required current and voltage to the LED. When we use the transistor as a switch, it operates in only two modes, either in the cutoff mode or in the saturation mode. When the GPIO pin is high, the signal is applied to the base. When the transistor is in the saturation mode, that means the LED will turn on. And when there is no signal applied to the base of the transistor, the transistor is in the cutoff mode. In order to operate the transistor in the right modes, we need to carefully select the values of the resistors that is connected to the collector as well as to the base. The collector current specification is 100 mA and base current specification is 5 mA for BC547 and PN transistor. So using these values, we can successfully calculate uh, the resistors that need to be connected with the collector and the base. Instead of uh, using this resistance value, we are using 330 ohm because uh, uh, we want to limit the current for this LED as well. Also, we are using this 470 ohm resistance for the base because it is readily available. In the previous screen, you have seen the schematic for interfacing the LED with the microcontroller. Now we will see the pinouts for circuit connections. Tiva C series has both type of the connections available on it. On the top side, we have 2020 pins, male connectors available for interfacing. And on the opposite side, we have the same connections, but in the female format. We can use any of these connectors for interfacing the external peripherals. The BC547 transistor has three pins namely collector, base and ohmmeter. If you face this flat surface, then the leftmost pin will be the collector, the middle one is the base and the rightmost pin is the ohmmeter. Since LED is a type of diode, therefore connecting it into the circuit requires attention. On the physical LED, the longer pin is anode and the shorter one is the cathode. Also, you can observe a flat surface on the circumference of the LED. The pin adjacent to that flat surface is cathode. After completing the circuit and connection, now attach your microcontroller with the computer. Before downloading uh, the program, you need to select stylus ICDI in the debug menu. Hit OK. And now you can download the program. The program has successfully downloaded. Press the reset button. And now you can observe the LED attached to port E pin 1 is uh, blinking. So that's all how we can interface an LED with Tivasi series launchpad evolution kit. Thank you for your time. See you next time.